good evening. I am Miss Sarah. I am Miss Lauren. And we are sitting down with Ras Tespool, the proprietor of Aristotle's Lantern, a local wand making shop. Good afternoon, Mr. Tespool. Good afternoon, ladies. Thank you for joining us today. You're very welcome. Now, you are, a, you were a apprentice of Mr. Ollivander, weren't you? Correct. How did you become interested in wand making? Well, uh, our shop uh, was established in 1897 mm -hmm. when my great-great-grandmother came over from Sicily, her name being Rose Tespolini. And uh, she, on the island of Sicily, which is an island uh, surrounded by water on all mm -hmm. sides, um, she was always down at the seashore picking up things, um, shells and seaweeds and bits of uh, rack and whatever she could get a hold of. Um, and of course, being out there, she could uh, see things out of the water and being magical, she could uh, realize that there were inherent magical abilities in items relating to, to nature and, and, the, and their surroundings. So she started just getting into playing with, with the materials and, and putting them together. And, and found out that she could basically make wands. And uh, from there, once they uh, immigrated to the United States in the, her, uh, right there at the, the turn of the century, uh, she uh, started a wand making shop. And I mean, it's always been a part of, of our family. Mm -hmm. um, our name's a little different now. They hacked the end <laughs> off when we landed because um, it was easier. Um, but uh, so that was how I got into it, as I've grown up with it. It was always something, something around. Hmm, very cool. What skills are important or beneficial to wand making? Well, uh, there's a whole a whole host of them that are important, and some you wouldn't necessarily uh, always think of. Um, but uh, I mean, firstly, your standard schooling is important. So I came mm -hmm. from the the uh, Horn Serpent House at the School of uh, Ilgorny, okay. um, which is the uh, the American mm -hmm. Magic School. Um, and you know, go through the standard courses there, usually your normal uh, magic. Uh, of course, uh, sort of not apprenticed, but just watching my other family members uh, mm -hmm. doing what they're doing. Uh, then once I was old enough, uh, I traveled across the pond, uh, spent some time in London, found out how uh, Ollivander does his work, which is a little bit different than what, mm -hmm. we, what we do here, um, but it's a good a source. And uh, other skills that, that I came across are a bunch of nomad ones are really important. You can never go wrong with a good knot. You have to know how to tie a good knot. If you're uh -huh. climbing trees, you don't want to fall out. Yeah. If you're trying to, to bundle things together, you need to be able to tie a good knot. Uh, uh, wood carving, that's, mm -hmm. that's not a magical skill. You just yeah. do it with your hands. Yeah. So a lot of actual nomad carpentry skills are, are really useful. In general, almost like uh, in the states we have the Boy Scouts, it's Boy mm -hmm. Scout skills. Uh, a lot of those are really useful. If you're trucking around in the wilderness hunting for wand wood, or trying to climb into a, a Sasquatch den to get some hairs, <laughs> you, know, you need to be able to recognize the animal signs, you need to be able to read the footprints. It's, you know, uh, so a lot of those type of skills are what, what we, I use and, and the other family members use to, to do that okay. kind of stuff. So how did you get connected with Oliver? I, I would surmise that it's not very easy to become an apprentice of his. Well, see, Oliver has been around for a long time. Yeah. Um, and from what I've been told is uh, way back when uh, my family and my, my great great grandmother um, and him had some correspondence way back. The and the families have been connected for a long time. Um, so it, it wasn't so much as an apprentice as I was just going to spend time with an old friend. Very interesting. Um, what, uh, sorry, what was it like to work with Mr. Ollivander? Well, um, he's a unique character, <laughs> for sure. Um, he, often when he speaks, you're not sure if he's giving you advice or he's uh, kind of telling you off. Uh, he can be kind of spooky sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, you hang 
hanging out in, in Diagon Alley, uh, getting to see how he works, getting to see how he interacts with customers. I mean, it, it was a whole other world from here. So mm -hmm. it, it was it was worth it. Wonderful. And do you agree with Mr. Ollivander's adage that the wand chooses the wizard? Almost oh, certainly it does. We we spend time crafting wands. We we put our, our love and care and knowledge into it, but it's it's they're almost alive. They they sense the, the wizard. They they want to interact. They don't want to be alone. I mean, almost like a pet. Mm -hmm. But more than that, it, it uh, they it's it's like any relationship. There's a, a give and take to them, and they they want to be in a relationship. So they they definitely pick the, the wizard of which they they want to have to spend their time with. Very interesting. Um, how did you s decide to start your own wand shop, Aristotle's Lantern? Well, as I said, my it's been a family uh, shop. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just the last one in the line so far, so now it's it's my shop, mm -hmm. um, and we're just continuing on with what we've always done. Um, we have gotten away from some of the um, uh, more traditional European type ideas. Um, we're uh, we're playing around with bamboo right now. It's very exciting. Um, and some more locally sourced materials like bayberries, um, because there are inherent magical uh, abilities to everything. We just have to play with the right amounts. But uh, you know, we're we're taking it in a new direction. But we're not giving up on the old. Wonderful. Now bamboo. What kind of material is that to work with? It's, it's interesting, definitely mm -hmm. different than normal wood. I mean, because bamboo comes already wand shapy. Mm -hmm. It's round, it's long. Um, what we have to do is actually is just to cut it, lay it and, and lay it out, dry it out, flatten it, and, and then mold it in the shape we want. It, it does make it very strong, very light, mm -hmm. but very springy. It has a lot of give. I was gonna say, um, I would imagine it being very supple. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it, it, it's different. Mm -hmm. um, we haven't quite gotten all worked out yet, but it's it's a new avenue. Any bamboo ones out there in actual use? Not currently. Not no. currently. It's, it's, it's still uh, it's prototyping stage right now. Um, exciting. Sometimes they blow up, particularly mm -hmm. if they get into fire, they mm -hmm. will explode. Oh, yeah. So that mm -hmm. we have been working on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, do you have any advice to future wand makers? Uh, sure. Uh, don't be afraid um, to push boundaries. You know, even if the, the, the Ollivander says you have to make it this way, those are just guidelines. Mm -hmm. Try your own thing. If it blows up in your face, it blows up in your face, you try again. Um, like I said, learn from your mistakes. You're going to make them. That Sasquatch is going to wake up when you yank his hairs out. That Thunderbird is going to wake up when you pull feathers out of him. Stuff is going to happen. You just have to roll with it. Another good thing is always wear a good pair of shoes. It's very important. Ah. You want to be comfortable when you have to run away and climb trees. Ah. I was thinking of as like um, a good stop guard for contact, um, connectivity well, you and so forth. Yeah. You don't want to have a connection between you and the ground in case of lightning or yeah. that kind of thing. But yeah, good pair of shoes is very important. So you don't stick to the three main core cores that all Vander sticks to? Well, those are the European cores, if you were, if you will. In the States, we have uh, four of our own main cores, uh, which are the uh, Horn Serpent Horn, uh, Thunderbird Feathers, uh, the, uh, I have a, just excuse my notes, I have so many. Uh, Puck Woody Thorns uh, are another main core, uh, and uh, the Sasquatch Hair is another core. Those are our four core cores. And then the European ones are Phoenix, Dragon, and, uh, Heart, String, and, and Unicorn Hair. Now, do you s um, do you find that there are Americans who prefer or use the European, or European sure. who uh, would use people the American? People will, will use both. Uh, Americans tend to want what they want, mm -hmm. so we'll make anything you want. Mm -hmm. um, in the states, most people tend to go with the. American ingredients simply because they are cheaper. We don't have to import them. Um, but yeah, there are certainly uh, enthusiasts or um, Anglophiles, if you will, who prefer to have <laughs> European ingredients to their wands. Traditional family or something like that. Okay. Um, what type of woods? You mentioned bamboo. What other type of woods are well, you using more frequently here? Um, we use a lot of. Uh, Oaks, mm -hmm. we use pine, not so often with pine, it's a little soft. Uh, but uh, ivy, ash, elm, 
home. Uh, locally, we use bayberry, which is a common coastal uh, shrub. Um, sycamores, uh, cypress trees are also local, mm -hmm. often used. Um, almost any tree can be used. Some are better than others. I was going to say, are there more that, um, are there any types of woods that are more accessi accessible to magic well, and the magical arts? Well, one of the things you always look for um, is to look if the tree has a population of uh, bough truckles in it. If it has bow truckles in it, it's a magical tree. If it so doesn't, there's a chance it might not be. Not necessarily the type of tree, but the individual tree. Just as humans, mm -hmm. some humans have magical abilities, some don't. It's the same with trees. Oh, but if, but bow truckles only live in magic wand trees. determines the length of the wands? Well, there is some disagreement on that, but in general, uh, we try to fit the wand to the witcher wizard the same way as one might tailor a suit. Uh, in general, a taller wizard would get a longer wand and a shorter wizard would get a smaller Is that just because it's more comfortable it's with more comfortable. size of hand? Yeah, it, it, would, it would look quite ridiculous if you had a four <laughs> foot tall human who had a you know, 20 inch wand, it would be just ridiculous. It's yeah. not comfortable to use. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't fit in your pockets. It, it's sized to the, to the witcher wizard. Mm -hmm. um, but there is also some play. If, if, if someone who is on the shorter side wants a longer wand, it's perfectly okay. Uh, shorter wands tend to be less uh, supple. They're less flexible, uh, while a longer wand has more chance to bend. Um, so longer wands tend to be quite good for Charms, jinxes, things that are a little quicker, mm -hmm. while a stout short wand is is better for just sheer power and, and uh, things like a a very strong hex or a protective char uh, spell is much better with a shorter, less flexible wand. Hmm. Okay. Um, going uh, now that we've talked about the different types of woods. Going back to the different cores, how are those materials chosen? Well, we just through experience, we know that certain uh, organisms have uh, certain amounts of magic within their systems, um, and and we take from those sources. So, while your average house cat might have some mm -hmm. little bit of magical ability, we don't source from house cats. But the um, not enough a magic. There's not enough magic essence to it, if you will. I think cats uh, are magical. Well, they're quite <laughs> magical, but they do not have much magical finesse. Um, and so we, we tend to source our cores from organisms that we know outwardly possess some magical ability, uh, be it the phoenix or a dragon or um, the Cadborosaurus or uh, the thunderbird. Those are all, they have intrinsic magical values. So we harvest from them. Um, it is a little different now than it used to be. Uh, in the past, we often didn't care for the well-being of the organism. And we've, we've become much better at that now. We tend to not, so in the case of, say, dragon heartstrings, mm -hmm. there is no way to remove dragon heartstrings without the death of the animal. Uh, nowadays, we tend to not use dragon heartstrings because it's, it's, there's no way to safely mm -hmm. do it. Um, so we either take them from already deceased dragons, or a lot of the American dragons are feathered. Mm -hmm. So the feathers have a fair amount of magical uh, essence to them, and we use the feathers. They're much easier to collect, and it doesn't mm -hmm. harm the yeah. individual. Um, same thing with certain uh, with spines or, or horns. Mm -hmm. Those are things that naturally swap off of the animal, so they can be collected. Um, but we don't endanger the environment by harvesting the ingredients. Oh, that's wonderful. That's good. I don't like killing dragons. <laughs> no, um, and it's nice that the sustainability is yes. thought of as well. Um, so what sort of magical properties do the cores bring to the wand? Well, each one's a little different. Um, I'm only going to run through a few because mm -hmm. there, are, there are a lot so of them. So many, yes. But um, things like, uh, like Cardborosaurus, they use their scales. Um, mm -hmm. Their scales, when we make them into a core, are usually good uh, for kind of quiet wizards who enjoy keeping themselves, 
and it, it imbues the wand with uh, a much better ability at casting water-based magics and okay. earth and weather type magics. Mm -hmm. um, then things like the uh, horned serpent horns uh, make the wands kind of uh, playful and powerful, uh, smooth casters that spells will come out real, real quick. It's easy to, to deal with them, uh, particularly for water magics. Uh, since the serpents live in water, it kind of you know goes hand in hand. Wherever the organism lives, often will will give you an idea of how that core is going to mm. react inside the wand and, and the abilities it will give. Mm -hmm. um, so with, with uh, say Sasquatch hairs, um, those are actually a good, well-rounded core. Um, okay. They're a very practical wand core. It produces very elegant and simple magics. It, okay. it's, it's just Is that works. one of the more popular cores? It's popular because it's easier yeah. to, it's cheaper, it's mm -hmm. easier to source, um, it's easier to take a whole handful and make a hundred <laughs> wands out of it. Um, then so in the southern regions of the states we have uh, chupacabra spines. Um, those wands tend to be kind of quirky and playful. Um, they're good for magic users who embrace spontaneity and, uh, and can laugh at themselves. Uh -huh. That's the type of wand they tend to have. Uh, then from the Midwest, we have the Thunderbird. We take their feathers. Um, those tend to be very powerful but stubborn uh, okay. wand cores. The, the, the wizard or witch who, who has those wands the wand may not function right every single time until you work at it a while, mm -hmm. and the wand learns to trust you. Mm -hmm. And then once it does, that wand will not will, will not potentially function for anyone other than the wand holder and their descendants. It it becomes loyal to the line once it has earned the trust. Um, and then the Thunderbird wants because of the, the nature of the animal, uh, they have a distinct skill set with with weather magics, mm -hmm. um, and they're very good at protective uh, charms. Uh, okay. Then one of the other houses of, of Elmorine, uh, the Puckwoogie Thorns, I mean, those are a, a mischievous air um, to them. Uh, they're kind of uh, independent, prankster -y type of wands. It's probably going to fail on you a bunch of times. <laughs> um, but once it, it you've bonded with it, uh, they're really good for hexes and jinxes and curses. Okay. Um, so I mean, yeah, each each different wand core produces different effects. Uh, then in combination with different wand woods, and then the third part being the, the witch or wizard who's using it, and it all together makes them each distinctly different, even though mm -hmm. they can be very similar. Okay. Um, so I feel like we kind of touched on this, but um, how are the materials sourced? Um, do you collect them yourself or purchase them through a provider? Well, most of them, if I can, I do it myself. Um, anything local, of course, we just go out and get it. The woods are nearby. Uh, the wood sources, we go and fetch them. I mean, we travel across, across the country uh, to get most of them. Now, some of the European woods and the, the European cores, those, of course, we have to import in. Um, there are a few places that say um, where some wealthy wizard has a collection of unicorns uh, in the states, and then we can ask to have mm -hmm. some from them, but uh, they don't always say yes. Um, and then in some cases, like the dragon heartstrings, we rarely ever bring them in, simply from the theatrical standpoint. Mm -hmm. um, but usually, we we source everything ourselves, except the things we have to import um, from Europe uh, and other parts of the world. Um, but usually yeah, it's us climbing trees, cutting it out, pulling hairs, pulling teeth. That's mm. us doing it. Is that uh, dangerous often? Oh yes, most definitely. Uh, it is not something to be taken into lightly. Just as you wouldn't uh, you know, poke a sleeping bear, you wouldn't uh, pull the hair of a sleeping Sasquatch either. Mm, yes. There is a, a science to the magic of wand making and procurement. You know, there's several of us have had to have things reattached and Ooh. burns healed and scratches and stitches and of course. So having some healing magic at your disposal is oh, always a good mm -hmm. idea. It is as used. Well. Yes. Yeah. First aid is always one of those uh, skills one should have. Mm -hmm. A knowledge of magical creatures. <laughs> well, thank you, Mr. Tespel, for joining us today. I'm always. sure our use at the library will enjoy having your knowledge partaken. Oh, but I remember we had talked before we started filming about the how Illumorni Il 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 
chose their wands, and it's mm -hmm. quite different than how the European schools yes, it choose is. their. It is different. Why don't you share a little bit about that? Sure. So, uh, unlike how wands are uh, chosen in, in uh, Great Britain, where you would go to a, a shop or a wand maker, uh, the wand maker takes measurements. Uh, goes back in the, the storeroom and pulls wands until we, they find the one that, that fits you, and then you purchase the wand and take it home with you. Um, mm -hmm. As a, a uh, in, Europe, uh, in, in Great Britain, I believe it's 11, mm -hmm. um, at age 11. Um, in the States, um, the age is the same, um, but uh, just to be sure that the, there's no underage uh, wizarding going on, uh, wands are not kept at home by the children. When a child uh, <laughs> attends the school, and you're sorted into your four houses, mm -hmm. um, where basically there are, uh, it's, it's quite fascinating, uh, four uh, statues of the founding animals, creatures. Mm -hmm. And the statue will then basically come to life when you stand in front of it, if that is the one you are chosen by. Mm -hmm. You are then sorted into your house, and at that moment is where wands are brought to you, and you are, uh -huh. your wand, and you are connected to each other. Mm -hmm. uh, the wand then stays at the school when you are not at school. It is kept there uh, through your tenure until you are old enough to be responsible. Mm -hmm. um, then you are allowed to take it. And is that at the same age as in Europe? Uh, I believe it was 17 in Europe. Is it that same age here in America? Or yes. So do you actually take orders from the school? Or do you ever? So, so yeah, often we will come into the schools um, and uh, uh, can fill out orders that way or they'll uh, make measurements ahead of time. Um, we do some of it. Uh, the school is, uh, is quite north of here. Um, so we do not get a lot directly from them. Um, now, a child can come into the school already owning a wand, mm -hmm. um, but in general, most people get their wand once they enter school. Um, but we make wands for students or adults or mm -hmm. anyone who's coming to the shop and ask and, and stuff. And if a child comes into Elven Morning with like a wand that they got from you before they came to school, they still have to leave that wand? Those are the rules. Yeah. 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 Just to be sure that nothing uh, happens and goes out of hand or is seen by the wrong people. Mm -hmm. That is very wise. I think of the Medusa and of the teachers. And um, um, thank you for joining us, Mr. Rastes Rastes Pool. Thank you, of course. Of course. And uh, thank you for visiting with us today. So, and that is it. <laughs>